Again, folks, if I could have your attention, we're going to begin the second half of the program. And we'd appreciate it if you please take your seats. And for those not paying attention to me, number one, I don't blame you. And number two, I suffer from the same disorder. Thanks. Our next guest is a graduate of Emerson College, holds a degree in theater education, and received classical training at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. After she spent some time on Broadway, she came home to Boston, well, it's not her home, she was raised in New York, to join the Freedom Trail players, appearing as Abigail Adams. Word of her unique form of education reached the State House of Massachusetts, and in 2003, then-Governor Mitt Romney presented a proclamation naming her as the official Abigail Adams of the Commonwealth. She was also presented with a citation for excellence in teaching from the Governor's Council. Her wide array of characters include Deborah Sampson, Abigail Adams, and Mercy Otis Warren, not Percy as I wrote here in the program. I would like to introduce to you, portraying Mother Goose, please welcome Julia Donahue. Well, good evening everyone and thank you for coming back for Act 2. Uh, so far this evening we have touched on almost every taboo. We have discussed religion, we have discussed politics and weather and criminals. And other than that, there actually is only one other thing I can think of and that's where I come in and that's how other people try to teach your children. John asked me to come here tonight to portray Mother Goose for you, but to do an adult version of Mother Goose, which I don't think I've ever used those phrases in the same sentence, adult <laughs> version of Mother Goose. So let us then try to uh, take the mystery out of the history, because Mother Goose really was a real person. Now, there was a man called Isaac Vergoose. Vergoose. Can you say Vergoose? No, that's not bad, but most people couldn't say Vergoose. A uh, similar problem he had uh, as other men of the colonial times, another one called Apollos Revoir. Who can say that? Changed his name to Paul Revere. Oh. Yes, another man, Peter Faneuil. Faneuil, as in Faneuil Hall. His name is spelled in a French way, and people said Faneuil. Faneuil. His name was pronounced Faneuil. But how stupid do you look trying to say that? So he also changed his name. Anyway, back to Isaac. Isaac was just a regular man. If you want to turn that sound down so I don't flick like that. I, can you hear me in the back without the mic? Yes. Good enough then. Never to say that Mother Goose didn't have a big mouth. <laughs> anyway, Isaac dropped the bear, kept the goose, and married a woman called Mary. Mary proceeded to give him 10 children and then promptly died. <laughs> Knowing that Isaac could not be the father of ten children as a single man, he quickly married a girl called Elizabeth Foster from Charlestown. And she became Elizabeth Foster Goose and then proceeded to present him with an additional ten children. Oh, uh, you can't tell me he didn't know what to do. <laughs> Come on now, really, really, really. No. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. So, Mary dead now, with her ten children. Elizabeth, with those ten she adopted, and ten more of her own. Can you imagine being the mother of twenty children? Can you imagine, now from a child's point of view, can you imagine the size of the table at Christmas? Can you imagine that if you were at one end, and the smashed potatoes were at the other end, you probably would be hungry. But can you imagine how many presents you would get? And how many presents you'd have to give? <laughs> Elizabeth had her hands full with these children, and she needed to keep them entertained. And the children ranged, ranged from older to younger, so the older children were able to help her take care of the younger children. But in those days, there were no supermarkets as you have them today, where you could go shopping in one place and, and take care of everything. Elizabeth had to take all the children in tow to the baker to buy the bread, to the meat man to buy the meat, and the vegetable, the greengrocer, to buy the vegetables, with all of these children in tow, trying to keep their attention. 
So she made up little poems, and that's what started the goose poems. So, for instance, to market, to market, to buy a fat pig. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. To market, to market, to buy a fat hog. Home again, home again, jiggity jug. It's a shopping list. <laughs> it's true, you laugh, but it's true. She didn't laugh because she had the kids entertained now. This is how it all began. So let's go through some of the poems and explain to you that they aren't just only fluff, but they are lessons and they are entertainment. And this is sort of how Elizabeth got along with, with the children. So uh, let's start. Oh, I love this first one. With all those children, there was a young boy called Jack. And in those poems, there's Jack. There's a lot of Jacks in the poems. I don't think there were many sons called Jack. But on Christmas Eve, it was actually, Elizabeth was cooking. And Jack came into the kitchen and he followed her in. And she said, Jack, you must stay away from the oven because it's quite hot and you may do yourself injury. So please go, go away. And he did. And Elizabeth went over to fix something else. And here comes Jack. She said, Jack, I have told you, please stay away from the fire as you'll do yourself injury. He goes away. She's back here. Who comes to follow? But Jack. Jack, I have told you three times now. You will do yourself injury. You will hurt yourself. There is a stool there. Go sit upon the stool and stay out of the kitchen. Hmm. That is a colonial timeout. Think about it. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. Didn't that child play with a spoon? He put in his thumb, and he pulled out a plum. And he said, what a good boy am I? And Elizabeth says, yes, Jeff, you are a very good boy. Now be away with you and take your cake and go away. It was a lesson. Colonial time out it is very true. It goes on with, with the lessons. And I have, I've got them in the book. Here's another one, another Jack. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. What did Jack do? Well, let's think of how stupid that is. <laughs> Do you allow your little children to jump over fire? No. no. In today's world, when I talk to the young children of today, and I tell them, jump over the candlestick, you know what they tell me? Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> it's a lesson. Don't play with fire. So you think that, that Mother Goose and all these rhymes are just for naught. They, they seem like fluff, but they're not really. So, well, we're going to quiz you a little bit on this. Let's, uh, let's go back to some more. Sharing. Sharing was a good thing. Do you know how some children, and I imagine some adults as well, you know how you order a pizza? And some people like only the crust? And some people like only the cheese? And all of a sudden now you've got wasted food on one side and wasted food on another side. Well, Jack Spratt would eat no fat. His wife would eat no lean, and so betwixt them both, they licked the platter clean. <laughs> you don't waste food. This is not a new concept. This is an old concept. Now, we talked about to market. Now, Elizabeth and all of her children, she had a daughter, also called Elizabeth. And Elizabeth married a man who was actually the publisher of the Boston Evening Post. And being that Elizabeth Goose Sr. was the mother-in-law, he published a lot of the poems. So you go like sucking up to the in-laws now, don't you? <laughs> yeah? Well, he, uh, he wanted the mother-in-law basically to stop the chatter. And let's take the energy and put it into a book, Mum. Let's do that. So, Elizabeth Foster Goose, Mother Goose, is accredited with many many poems. But with 20 children, do you really think she wrote them all? <laughs> so, let us play a game. It will be called Rhyme or No Rhyme. You get it? Yeah? You with me? All right. I will read a poem to you and you tell me, is it real? Is it Mother Goose? Or is it not? We'll start with Hickory Dickory Duck. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse did run. Hickory dickory duck. Deal? No deal. What do you think? No deal? You're right, no deal. No, you're not right. No, you're not right. See, it's not as easy as you think. Some of them you will think will be what you call gimmies. You think they're really easy, but maybe they're not. How about this? Uh, 
Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Rain, rain, go to Spain and never show your face again. Huh? No? Yeah? No. <laughs> hey, diddle, diddle. The cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. Yes? Yes? How many say yes? Who else? Wrong, 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 wrong. All right, here's a good one. Let's see, I had to especially put this one down. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she did not know what to do. She, let me find that actual, where, where do I put this here? She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. So she sent them to bed without any bread. She whipped them all, sent them to bed. She whipped them all and sent them to bed. Do you think perhaps she was having a bad day? <laughs> Home? Yes? yes. No. <laughs> Yeah, you thought this was going to be easy, this mother goose is going to all be fluff. No, this is a quiz, and spelling will not count. <laughs> Georgie poured you put in pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. Yeah. No. <laughs> Another side, you know, Georgie poured you was nasty, how about this? Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her. Put her in a pumpkin shell, and there he kept her very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, uh, it was not easy to be a single parent of all that. Um, let's see if this, hey, there's some, let's go. Here's, here's one. And now you, you need to join in on this because if you think it's easy just to sit there in the audience, nah, nobody else picked on you, but I will because they can. How many of you learned these poems when you were children? And how many of you passed these poems on to your children or your grandchildren? You see what you've done? You see what you've done? How about this? Song, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. All right, Mozart, good. That's not the question, you're disqualified. There is another poem that has the same tune. I'll leave it to you. Think hard. Don't think that hard. Could be. That's not the one I was going for, because we're not allowed to talk about that one anymore. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. Where were you brought up? <laughs> <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little bat. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder where you're at. Like a peach ray in the sky. Up above the world so high. How I wonder where you're at. <laughs> Twinkle, twinkle, little tree, how I wonder where you be. <laughs> no. If you get this right, you will receive an A. If you get it second right, you will receive a B. If I need to give you another clue, you will receive a C. A, B, C. There you go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Same song I just had sung to me. <laughs> All right, so I, I wrote them, but I can revise them. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and what? Easy, right? Second verse. Then up Jack got and off did trot as fast as he could caper to old Dame Dodd, that's the lady next door, to old Dame Dodd, who patched his nod with vinegar and brown paper. See that look you have on your face? That's the same look of confusion that I have when I sing that to the children. Do you not use vinegar? to clean wounds anymore. You're laughing, so I guess not. And brown paper to, to, to seal that in? What do you do when your children skin your their knees? What, what's it called? Band-aids? Band Band-aids. Band -aids. All right, help me here. What's the, well? What's the band-aid? It's not an idle question, what's the band-aid? <laughs> I've heard of this plastic. I learn many things from modern day people. I don't understand plastic. I don't understand. You could probably say that this one just signs me. I'm stuck. I'm band-aid.
All right, go ahead. Oh, oh, that's all right. That's all right. This is the, this is sort of the, the humorous part of the evening. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. How about Mary and the lamb? And she brought the lamb to school. Huh? Sing a song with sixpence, a pot full of rye, four and twenty backwards, baked in a pie. Is this not cruelty to animals? <laughs> is, is it a poem? Or is it not? Yes? Who else says yes? You are on your own. Wrong, but on your own. It's a brave man who can stand up to that. So, let's see. Little Jack Horner, twinkle, twinkle, little star. It goes on and on and on. But really, what it was, the poems that Elizabeth told her children and her grandchildren, much to the son-in-law's dismay, were simply ways to keep the children entertained. Simple as that. Now, Mary Goose, the original Mrs. Goose, is buried in the Granary Burial Ground. She died in, in about um, 1690. So it was a very long time ago. But people are surprised when they say, you know, oh, Mother Goose has come. It's like, all right, yeah, Mother Goose, OK. She really was a real person. Mary Goose, then Elizabeth Foster Goose. And it was Elizabeth who wrote all of the poems for the children. Question, sir? How many were political satires? Many were. Many were political satires well after, well after my day, as, as we've gone through. There are so many poems. Here's one. All right, here, here's one. It's not a political one, but many of them were political. I think Humpty Dumpty, although that's not an original. How about this one? This is one. Th there were some short ones that she wrote because you needed a, a quick little ditty. I'll tell you a story of Jack and Dory, and now my story's begun. I'll tell you another about my brother, and now the story's done. Quick and dirty. Right? How about this one? Now, poem or not a poem? You may know this, but you may not know where it comes from. <sighs> See if I can do it on one breath. Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. For Moses, he knows his toes aren't roses, as Moses supposes his toes to be. <laughs> poem? Rhyme? Or no rhyme? You say no. Where do you know this from, anyone? Singing in the rain. Do you think they made it up for the movie? No. Poor. Yeah. I always get them because they always think, oh, that's a trick question. That's a trick question. It's not. And then there were simple things like counting. One, two, buckle my shoe. Those are just little lessons. Hey, diddle, diddle. That was another silly one. Song of Sixpence, Mary and the Lamb. Are there any? Oh, here's one. This is a good one. Because children love bugs. Especially modern children really love bugs. Little Miss Muffet, she sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Do you know what curds and whey are? Cheese. Cottage cheese. You know large curd or small curd cottage cheese? The, 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 the white part is the curd and the liquid part is the whey. Curds and whey. Must, <laughs> little Miss Muffet must have been fat. As she was sitting on top of eating cottage cheese. Along came a spider, sat down beside her, and frightened little Miss Muffet away. Which brings you into that other song about that poor little spider who kept getting rained off the drink. <laughs> Same deal. Bugs. The children like that. And they would spend time with no books and no... Um, those things. <laughs> they watched the little creatures of the land. They watched the bugs, they watched the spiders, they kept them entertained. So yet again, something else to keep them going. Moses again, and Peter the pumpkin eater. Mm. There are so many, that's a Jack Adoring, Jack Spratt. Are there any that you can think of from your childhood that you always wondered, where'd that come from? Not one. There's one. I wonder what kind of grain Grandpa really had in his barn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I, well, you get that, it's all right. No, but, no you have one, did you? Wee Willy Winky. Oh, wee, you like this one. 
We really winky. He liked to look in people's windows. <laughs> and why they would call him Wee Willy Winky, I didn't write that one. It, it's a children's show. You want an adult. How am I doing with the adult part? Am I doing all right? So, it, it's just, this is just a little bit to, to give you an idea of it's not all about serious history, but this is also about some fun history that was history that was transformed into what is now modern history and giggles. And still you will tell your children and your grandchildren about all of these little poems. And when they come back to you and tell you, oh, Granny, I've learned a new poem, and it's called Wee Willy Winky. <laughs> Don't crack up. <laughs> you must maintain your composure. You must. Because if I can get by with people writing all these other poems and giving me credit for the ones about the pumpkin guy who keeps his wife in a shell, a woman who lives in a shoe and beats the children. How about the mice? Not only were they blind, but she maimed them. <laughs> is, is that the sort of thing that puts your child to dreamland? I think not. So although history tends to repeat itself, sometimes what is repeated is really not history at all. So on that, I hope you had a giggle with this. And as you say in your modern day, that's my time. I'm Elizabeth Goose. If you have any thank you. Folks, Julia Donahue. Yeah. I just a sidebar when when I spoke with Julia a few months ago, she said, I, I, I've never done it for adults, it's only for kids. I said, you'll, you'll handle it. Just show up. And she did, huh? One more round of applause, yeah. yeah. Good job, Julia. All right. That was fun.